Welcome to Terms of Deployment, uh, the process of evaluating Hatchbox, Fly.io, and Render for developers. Uh, I have a confession to make. Despite the title, which is inspired by both the novel and the movie, Terms of Endearment, there is no connection between those media and this talk at all. So if you're a Deborah Winger fan or Shirley MacLaine, if you leave, I won't be mad. Um, so today we're gonna talk a little bit about, uh, not that, uh, I think I loaded the wrong slides, hold on. There we go, all right. So today we're gonna to talk a little bit about um, some of the new app hosting platforms that have come online uh, for Rails developers in the past little bit. Um, gonna introduce you to who I am and why I'm even bothering to give this talk. Um, we're gonna talk about the contenders a little bit, uh, do a little dance battle. Um, and then we're gonna talk about the different levers that you can pull to make your decision for yourself. Um, whether you work for an agency or a digital product studio or you're a freelancer, um, hopefully we're, we're gonna give you the tools to help you make your decision on which platform you wanna use. Um, and then we'll just do a little recap at the end with some tools uh, to help you move forward. <clears throat> so first of all, who am I? I'm Jordan Burke. I'm a senior software developer at Headway, a digital product studio based in Green Bay. And you know it's me because I'm wearing the same jacket in the picture. I actually only have one jacket and a couple of hoodies. Um, I'm a recovering technical founder that's learned a lot of things the hard way. Um, my, first healthcare, uh, my first startup was a healthcare IT startup. Um, so I learned how to build a HIPAA compliant infrastructure on AWS in 2013. Not fun. Um, I've helped run uh, Rails Girls events and Rails Bridge events uh, and taught some intro to Rails courses. And I heavily relied on Heroku's free tier uh, to teach people how to put their Rails app online. Um, I just, I love to build things, whether it's Legos, my garden, software, what have you. Um, I may have a little bit of a problem. Um, this is just a small part of my collection. Don't even get me started on my Star Wars tabletop miniature collection. Um, but let's, let's talk a little bit about why we're here. So first off, how many of you work with clients and recommend hosting solutions or are on small teams and responsible for those decisions? Okay, so a couple of you should get something out of this, hopefully. Um, at Headway, we work with larger clients that have their own infrastructure teams, uh, and this talk isn't necessarily for those clients, so if you're watching, you can tune out. Uh, the smaller clients that we work with are just getting started or don't have a lot of technical expertise in-house, and this talk is definitely for them. Um, so what, what really spurred the genesis of this talk is, as you may have heard, uh, in late August of 2022, Heroku announced that they were discontinuing their free tier. Um, like you, I'm sure this uh, threatened the livelihood of 20 apps that you had put on Heroku and completely forgot about for five to seven years. Um, I mean, how dare they? Um, I'm, I'm kidding, of course, but it shook a lot of things up. Uh, and even though nothing was really changing for our clients, we still use Heroku for a couple of our clients, um, it prompted us to look at some alternatives. Uh, and there were a lot of alternatives that were popping up out there. And it made us ask the question at Headway, are we serving our clients' best interests? And can we serve them better? So. Uh, we decided to explore some new options with internal products uh, and some client projects that the client trusted us to be good steward of their resources, their budget, their time. Um, we deployed uh, some client projects to Hatchbox, Fly, and Render. Um, and we, uh, we wanted to determine what each platform's quirks and eccentricities were so that we could make informed decisions in the future. Um, now you might ask, why not Elastic Beanstalk? Why not MRSK? Um, why not X? Um, and these were the three platforms that we felt closely, closest matched our needs and our clients' needs at the time. Um, Evil Martians just released a blog post last night about MRSK. So if you come back in, 
if I go to RubyConf in November, I'll probably add that to the list. Um, but there are a number of platforms out there that can serve your client's needs. These are just the three that really works for us. So let's talk about the contenders that we brought to the stance off. How many of y'all have used Hatchbox? I would expect that. <laughs> um, how many of y'all have used Fly? Okay, a couple hands. How many of y'all have used uh, Render? Okay, a couple more hands, all right. So we've used all three platforms in some fashion at Headway, and I've tried to remain objective in this overview, but we're all human. It's like, it's like Star Wars in a way. I'm gonna have some favorites, but I love all of them. So just try to keep that in mind. Don't call me out. Well, you can call me out, that's fine. Uh, we'll start with Hatchbox. Um, disclaimer, this is all my interpretation of it. Chris sitting right here has nothing to do with what I'm about to say. Uh, it's, it's by Rails devs for Rails devs um, and lives by the principle of convention over configuration. Uh, you can bring your own backend servers, um, not from anywhere but the usual suspects, AWS, DigitalOcean, Linode, Vulture. So you've got some options there. Um, we work with a lot of startup companies, so one of the things we like to recommend is that they sign up for AWS Activate, get $1,000 in free credits from AWS, and then back that up with uh, Hatchbox, so they've got a, <clears throat> a little bit of a, a head start with that. Um, clearly, Hatchbox is from the folks at Go, Go Rails, uh, so that you know they're scratching their own itch with it. Um, some considerations, it's opinionated and Rails only, as of right now. Sort of, okay. Uh, so if you're trying to do something outside the conventions, you definitely can, but you're gonna have to do it yourself. There's nothing on Hatchbox that prevents you from doing whatever you want on your servers. So, moving on to Fly. Fly is really nifty in that it scales where your users are. Um, and there's a free tier with it. So, um, but if you have your app go viral in South America, your app can scale instances there. If you have lots of worldwide traffic at very specific times of day, Fly helps you keep up with the ebb and flow of your users. Um, Fly's instances are uh, bare metal machines so you can configure them with whatever your deploy process is um, using the toggle configuration files. You can deploy Docker files with it. Um, and if you run into issues, uh, posting on either their community board <clears throat> or on Reddit gets you a response super fast, sometimes even from their CEO. The number of times I've been on Reddit and I've seen their CEO pop into a thread just to answer a question is astonishing to me. <clears throat> Fly likes to soft launch, launch features into their CLI, so you might have to dig around to figure out what you're doing. Uh, <clears throat> and while they offer database in instances, they specifically and almost gleefully maintain that they are an app platform. So you might want to host your DB elsewhere if you want better management tools. I like their line in the sand. I respect it. It's just a consideration for you. All right, Render. So Render is the platform I've least experimented with, but I think there's a lot of upside there. Uh, it has probably the fastest setup I've ever seen. Um, I took one of the Jumpstart free template Rails apps, put it on Render in about five minutes. Um, like, just from get in it to get push. Um, it's, all, it's also the cheapest, I found. Um, I completely forgot about Setapp for about a month and got a bill for 14 bucks, so that's pretty good. Um, but they really wanna replace Heroku as your one-stop shop for all app, app needs. Uh, static sites, web apps, DBs, Redis, cron jobs, all of it. Um, it's, it's clearly aimed to replace uh, Heroku as the app hosting multi-tool and they have a free tier to put their money where their mouth is too. Um, and it's relatively significant free tier. Um, it'll get your uh, Rails app up and running. So that's something. It's not inconsequential. So, which one do I choose? There is an answer and it might surprise you. How many, how many of y'all walked in here not thinking that it was gonna be, oh, it depends or, Anything like that, no? No, we're gonna start some fights. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, it all, it all depends. 
It all depends. That was a misdirect. Obviously, that's why you're here, so you can learn about the platforms and figure out how to make that decision yourself. So, we're going to talk a little bit about what you can do and how we use it at Headway uh, to kind of make the decisions on which platform we're going to use. So why not choose one? Um, you know, why not choose one and stick with it? There's nothing wrong with that. Depending on your clients, your customers, and your team, that might be the best option for you. Stability is paramount when it comes to delivering good products to our customers and to our clients. So if there's one that you feel most comfortable with, just go with it. But you may have to choose now or in the future which one, if you need to switch, if you need to stick with one, or if you need to diversify. So we want to talk about how Headway, uh, how we at Headway are making those decisions. So we have a couple of criteria that we consider when deciding which platform we're going to use for a new client or if we're gonna migrate an existing client to a new host. We look at the, uh, the knowledge cost or the experience our team has with the platform, the technical cost or how we need to spend our client's time and budget to get the project deployed to it, and then the cost cost, uh, which is pretty self-explanatory, but we'll dig into it a little bit more here in a second. So with the knowledge cost, how much experience do we have with this platform for this type of build? We, we have, at Headway, we're not just a rail shop, we also do Phoenix apps, we do uh, React Native and React Web, um, and sometimes whatever our client needs in that particular moment, uh, we're very polyglot. So is this platform, is X platform the best solution for this project? Have we ever, have we ever deployed a Phoenix app to render before? Um, and sometimes the answer is no but that's one of the considerations that we take into account. Um, and then is that knowledge localized? Have we shared that within the team? How, how easy is it for someone else on the team to step in if the current developers win the lottery? Um, or win the next money laundering operation known as NFTs? Um, are, there, are there tricks and pitfalls we've learned along the way that we've learned the hard way that aren't documented somewhere that could trip us up for someone else coming onto the project? or when we turn it over to the client, to the client themselves. Sometimes they're going to maintain it. We need to make sure that it's not something that's gonna be obtuse to them. Um, and then is this knowledge easily transferable? How much DevOps and infrastructure knowledge do you need to know to get up to speed on it? Is it something where it's just get push and you're done? Um, is it something where you're going to have to every time run half a dozen CLI commands just to get uh, into um, the console to deploy it. How hard is it to get the Rails console? Sometimes that's a determining factor. If it's a pain in the butt to get the Rails console, I'm, I'm not gonna think about it twice, but I'm lazy. Uh, technical cost. You know, this includes uh, both the budget for the project itself and the trust in the team to complete the objectives we're setting. Those are both finite resources for our client. And we need to make sure that we're being good stewards of those resources with this decision. Or we may be letting our predisposition to tinker with new things run wild a little bit. You know, we need to be very clear about that with ourselves and with our clients. Um, and if an update needs to be made, such as upgrading Postgres or Ruby versions, how much work is involved in that? Is it easy enough for the client to do, or do they have to find time with us or someone else to do it? This also takes into account the expertise of their team as well. A lot of times, you know, they've got a single developer or a single head of technology, um, which is someone who is basically focused on making sure their emails go out and their social media doesn't break. You know, so how easy, how easy is it for them to do these things? And then a big one, uh, if the product is put on Product Hunt, how hard is it to stay ahead of 502 errors? Does it scale? How easily? And if it doesn't, is it, our, is it our fault or is it the platform's fault? I mean, let's be real. Who here hasn't written some code that causes some 502s when people try to use the app? And if you haven't, I want to talk to you. And then there's the money cost. 
let's be real. This is, this is one you definitely need to, need to discuss with the client, but only after you've discussed the other two costs internally. Because monthly costs are a concrete number that the client can see and it impacts their burn rate. So if your previous explorations lead to not using the cheapest option, make sure you have your reasons on why, why you go with that. Make sure you have them ready to go so you can lay out what the trade-offs are. Like this is, this is the one that's easily, easiestly accessible by clients. All they see is the dollar signs in a lot of times. But you need to tell them, yeah, you can, you can spend five bucks, five bucks a month on this particular platform, but it's gonna take you 20 man hours to us to get things changed. So these are all the things to consider uh, when, when kind of working with your clients and trying to define the best solution, because that's the other thing. This is not a decision you really should make by yourself. You need to talk to your, your clients or your customers about it. Um, Otherwise, you're probably going to end up going with the one that you want and not necessarily the one that best serves them. So, we've given you some tools. Uh, we've taken you to the dance-off. And now, you've, now we're gonna give you some additional tools to help plan your journey. Um, you know you best. You know your capabilities. You know your team's capabilities. You know the clients that you're working with. Uh, if you're a small technical co-founder or the person put in charge of maintaining the infrastructure on a small team, first of all, I see you and I love you. Um, but you know what the smart moves are for your resources. Trust your gut and be willing to reach out for help even if you're working on a client project. The number of times that we've run into something where we just need to hit Chris up on Discord or hop into the community forum on Fly we immediately get answers um, or pointed in the right direction. So you don't have to know everything. It's all just about being willing to ask, uh, ask for help and reach out for it. And all three platforms I touched on today have very active pres presences on Discord and Reddit and their community boards. Um, so you're, not likely, you're likely not the first person to run into a roadblock you're experiencing uh, and help is just a question away. Um, but we'll have some tools for you. I'm going to post these uh, slides in the Slack channel, um, and you'll be able to see all my silly speaker notes as well. Uh, you can either laugh or make fun of me. I don't care. Um, I, this is actually uh, this talk is actually born out of a blog post that I'm writing about an in-depth comparison between these three platforms and Heroku, um, which actually is getting longer by the day because I think we're gonna add MRSK in there um, and we'll see what else happens next week. Um, but with that blog post, we're also gonna have a Notion checklist, a public Notion checklist uh, that you can use to duplicate and kind of make your own. Um, we, we have one internally that we use to kind of, you know, gut check ourselves as we're spinning up a new client project and making the decision on which host we're gonna use. Um, and as always, I mean, I've broken a lot of things, uh, both hearts and software. Um, but feel free to reach out to me for mistakes uh, that I've made, and maybe I can help you not make those. Um, so yeah, we've got some time for questions. Uh, you can ask them to Arthur Pendragon, my dog here, um, or me directly, but my email's on there. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions, I'm, I'm happy to take them. Yes, very good question. Um, so the question was, do you get managed uh, databases on fly um, like you do on Heroku? The answer is no. Um, they have, they just rolled out, I think in this past week or so, uh, Postgres clusters on fly. Um, but those are still unmanaged. Um, in fact, one of the apps that we have on Fly actually still uses the Heroku managed databases um, because that is, that's one of the things they recommend. They recommend RDS or uh, Heroku, which adds more complexity, um, but it's a solution. It, it works really well. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. And that's, 
to make that point more clear, um, a lot of the, the clients that we support are still on Heroku. They were paid Heroku plans before, they're paid Heroku plans now. Um, I don't know what it is about Heroku discontinuing the free tier, but at least for me, it just kind of shocked my brain like, oh, are these guys, what, what are these guys doing? Um, so part of that is for so long having um, Rails Girls, Rails Bridge, Intro to Rails classes, being able to just set up free Heroku accounts um, and looking for alternatives for that. Um, but as far as Heroku goes, as nothing has really changed. Um, like you're still paying, like they haven't raised prices. Um, I, it's, it's almost like a psychological thing. Like if, they're, if they don't have a free tier anymore, in my opinion, to be clear, uh, it's almost like they're not reinvesting in the community anymore. Um, and Fly and, and Render really wanna do that. Not yet, not for that reason specifically. The question was, have we moved clients over for the, the, uh, the on-demand scaling geographically, right? Yeah, we haven't moved anyone over there for that yet. One of the clients we have moved over to Fly because there is the potential there um, as they grow to need very specific geographical distribution. Um, but that has that particular bar hasn't factored into our decision making as of like this is a need right now. It's a very good question. Do we uh, typically do we try to um, factor in our clients uh, comfort and expertise with managed DB versus unmanaged DBs uh, into the um, the equation? And yes and no, like not specifically. A lot of our clients don't have a lot of technical um, in-house support. Um, the ones that we're, we're looking at for Hatchbox Fly render. Um, so we kind of take that as a holistic thing. Um, if, if, they're, if they take us a little, if it, they take a little while for, uh, to change their DNS settings uh, to reflect an app that we've put up somewhere, we kind of take that as an indicator, okay, we probably just need to set them up on a managed DB somewhere because they're not gonna have the time or bandwidth to really manage this DB themselves. All right, so Daniel, who is uh, a former coworker, challenged me, if I'm gonna do another Intro to Rails class just by myself, no client, no one's paying for it, which platform am I gonna use? As of, as of today, I'm going to say Render. Um, they have the most expansive free uh, option um, and you can give them a, um, a standard uh, render.yaml render uh, to get their app online from, from GitHub. Um, I think right now that is probably the closest analog to what Heroku was in terms of just get remote add, get push. Um, and I think for an intro to Rails class, that's probably as far as we would go. So the question is, if I were to put an app on, on render, just to get it out there, would I bother dockerizing it first or just do like with Heroku and just send it up the pipe? Uh, again, I'm a, kind of a lazy developer. I'd probably just send it up the pipe. Um, in, in thinking about it, I probably would set up a Docker file with the render.yaml file so that if I'm distributing it to other folks to use as like an example, um, I'd probably set up a Docker file for that, yeah. Depends on how many times I'm gonna do it, right? If you do it once, Okay, fine. If you do it twice, then maybe I should automate this. Uh, and there was a question over here. Yeah. With, with Render and Hatchbox, both of those are automatically deployed through GitHub um, or webhooks of some sort. Uh, so a lot of that user management falls back on you um, and typically follow the repo. Um, like you're probably gonna set up your, your Render and Hatchbox deploys on a protected branch uh, where there's only a certain number of people who can push to that branch or merge in. Uh, Fly, as, as of the last time I used it, uh, a couple weeks ago, um, it's a CLI command. Um, so I think, I, I wanna say everyone still has like push access or deploy access uh, if you're not also using GitHub Actions to deploy it. Um, so I don't know, I honestly couldn't tell you where Fly is at with that. Um, I do know that they also have a GitHub action for deploying the fly. 
um, which helps restrict some of that so you don't have folks just cowboy coding and, and deploying <coughs> like I've done. Um, but uh, yeah, there, I think a lot of them rely on, on the, the repo permissions for some of that. The question was, and I'll just open this up to the room. Um, what are the leading indicators for a technical team to move from a managed database to an unmanaged database? Um, and honestly, I, I feel like that's on an it depends case by case basis. Um, but I am open to other answers. That's a very good answer. That is, that's the answer. <laughs> uh, I, do, I do see other hands, yeah. All right, so we've got two good answers. Dedicated ops team, unsupported extensions. Do we have a third one? Colin, were you raising your hand? Mm. Back up, back up, yeah, mm-hmm. That's a very, yeah. Yeah, you should definitely not move to unmanaged until you know that you can back up your data. Is that good? Yeah, all right, excellent. Mm. Are there any features or functionality from Heroku that I feel are missing uh, from any of these platforms? I, uh, I, I, I don't know what that was, um, but probably. I didn't hear what, what they said. Um, I would say uh, ease of integrations. Um, like that's one of the things that Heroku does really well is you can just add free tiers of a bunch of different services without having to, to update your Docker file or go into the server and add the, the packages yourself. Um, but even that, I think is coming, coming to connection pretty quickly. Um, I, I know uh, Hatchbox has made some upgrades, Fly has made some upgrades recently to where it's just you know adding a couple lines to your, your Docker file and it's ready to go. Um, yeah. Anyone else? No? All right, well thanks for listening.